Hello everyone, I'm Jefferson Mendoza. First off, thank you very much for your continuing support. That's because creating these videos is made out of passion and my desire to highlight the talent of visual artists everywhere. In today's vlog, I was given special access to the home and studio of visual artist Richard Buxani. Come and immerse yourself in the multitude of artworks found in Richard Buxani's Art Hub. Hidden away in this alleyway with a wall mural is a quaint yet grandiose art space that awaits you. Meet Richard Buxani, owner of the 1,100 square meter art hub. But it's all purely for art. So we've uh, decided to make this space to form an art hub so that uh, artists can uh, do shows here, they can do collaborations, and then we have a, a space for whatever exhibit we can come up with. So. The Art Hub is composed of a cafe, small exhibition areas, and a four-story building where Richard's workshop is found on the ground floor. But some areas are off-limits. Tell us a little bit about this sculpture right here. I think it's a 10-foot sculpture for uh, a client that I've already finished. So it comes with a sword that needs to be screwed and uh, a big head. So uh, it just hasn't been installed yet because it will be uh, screwed over in the site because I think this is going to be shipped to a different area in the Philippines so I have to probably create this uh, sculpture. So that's why we're trying to save uh, uh, the space for the crate. We'll just put the head uh, on the lower part, including the sword. So we'll just need to pack this up in one crate. Okay, here. Above his workshop on the second floor is Richard's working office along with artworks from other artists as he gears up for his upcoming events. This type of aesthetics in terms of you know, deforming and forming the metals, do you think your aesthetics is, the style is a, a growing trend in the art industry? I guess probably a little bit, yes. Probably because a lot of collectors are now considering collecting sculptures as well. Before, uh, when you get collectors, mostly they collect paintings, which they hang on the walls now. But nowadays, uh, most of these collectors, they already have so much paintings on their walls so now they're already maximizing the spaces that they have by uh, purchasing sculptures the metal that i use is copper and brass so it will basically hold just the same for hundreds of years it will not deteriorate it will not rust so it's a good thing that the metals that i use will last for five six decades or no sorry five or six centuries so you can pass it down to so so many generations Trisel. all right so now where are we going now after this uh we can go here at the at the back room studio Every time Richard opens a new set of doors, it's a feast for the senses. So much creativity in one place. This time, we enter the backroom studio, a space where the current featured artists are shown. How is the selection process like? Since we can only hold 12 exhibits a year, it's kind of like a vetting process for us so we just need to make sure that the artists are reliable number two their works their works are well not copies of other artists number three for young artists it's always a good thing that they can hold their first solo exhibit with us but like i said 
Darwin Guevara is an artist who has already been in the Florence Biennale. He's already had a solo show here and he will be holding another solo show here in November of this year. Moving on to the next room is Richard's Artworks, made available for the public to see or to anyone wanting to get a quick escape from the cafe below. Regarding selecting artworks that will be shown to the public, what is the process like for you? So, let's say you did mention about Manila Art, in regards to choosing the right one for the right event, what goes through your mind? Uh, the normal process is that I always bring the newest sculptures that I do. Like for annual sculpture review, which is being held every year at uh, SM Mega Mall, I always have to bring the latest uh, sculpture that I've designed for the year. For example, the Samurai. It's a beautiful art piece, but I've already designed this a few years back. So I normally do not make this for shows anymore. But if clients want to get Samurai wires, of course, they can get it here. So the latest uh, uh, pieces that I'm doing are the bonsai tree. So that's... Uh, that has been showed at Art Lounge Manila for a solo show this year. So that's the one that I'm showing also in Manila Art. So the third floor holds mostly my works. Now on the third floor, one can truly feel that you are in a mini museum. Most are Richard's previous artworks with some art pieces from other well-known Filipino visual artists. And for any visiting guest artist, a room is available for them to stay at. Did you think that you would be this successful in only a short time since you said your first exhibition was in 2017? Uh, actually, no. I, I never had any expectation. I was just happy that, you know, we get this much people interested in the works. Up to now, it's still the same. I still do my work on a daily basis. We plan out our activities probably one or two months, two months ahead. But I still work every day. It's always easier to work on a day-to-day -day basis. This trophy is by Napoleon Abueva, the national artist. So you do collect artworks as well, too, yes. right? as well as being, producing artworks. Yes. How important is that as a visual artist, to also consume art? Well, for me, I don't just believe in my work. I've always believed in uh, the works of other artists as well. So it plays a lot of... Uh, importance to us that we also collect the works of other artists.